Hello everyone, welcome back to the Urge of Empires 4 Commentary. I am Beyond, and today's matchup we have Rack Attack, aka Recon, playing in the dark blue as the Mongols with the golden boat in the middle. Across the way on Hidden Valley, across all four of these ponds, we have Avely playing as the Ayubids in the purple with the treasure chest in the middle. Now, in this matchup, the Iobids are con widely considered one of the best sieves in the game currently. They're just, they feel like they're in a very, very good spot. And let's see which wing we're gonna be going with here. Will Avely decide to be a gambler man himself and go for the bazaar? Or will he kind of go more of a normal route like the culture wing or that eco wing? Honestly, even military wing, pretty much anything is in a decent spot at the current moment. And players are still testing out a bunch of different things. It's one of the, that's one of the fun parts of testing out in rank. And of course, the large EGC TV tournament is coming up, which is always going to be interesting to see what these players pull out in that. I'm not sure if either of these two players have made the top um, 12, I believe, are only ones playing. So I think they all did play in the qualifiers, though. We'll also leave their links in the description below. Speaking of shameless shoutouts, if you are enjoying this video and you have enjoyed the commentaries, please do leave a like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. And drop a comment. Let me know how you feel the IUBids are. Do you think they're overpowered, right in the right place, or if something needs a tweak? Recon has decided to invest heavily in this early fishing eco. So we can see that if you go back here, there's a lot of uh, villagers on wood and more continue to be rallied there. And that is a telltale sign that you're going to be getting that early fishing eco up. Of course, these fishing boats are pure wood and they turn it into pure food. Um, on top of that, this is one in the middle of the map. So, But we do not see that Avery is, seems much of interest at all. In going up and there it is the selection is advancement the culture wing has been selected so he's gonna be looking for a fast castle maybe even a fast imperial age so maybe he just doesn't think it's worth it to leave his base to try to get map control knowing full well that if recon went for an early mongols aggressive build uh, there's almost no point in getting because you can't really out aggress the mongols uh, if you're gonna be going for that kind of play style in the early game culture wing has been selected and we can see that he's going to be looking to put a few more villagers on gold. Actually, no, going to be going for a, is it a barracks or archery range? So coming out, so trying to get a little bit of uh, map control with maybe a desert raider or two. Um, maybe to uh, attack this over here. And you can start to harass these um, these fishing boats as well, because you can switch the archery um, version of the desert raider and start to just really ping away at all these fishing boats and cause a lot of annoyance for recon. He invested a whole bunch into this. He also is getting a few deer as well, which is nice there. What is this guy going over here with a hammer? Where are you, where are you going? Looks like we're going to be heading over to this one, getting a second dock. So Recon is heavily, heavily investing in that early fishing eco. You can see not even going up yet. So is a few minutes behind on even the feudal transition. But if he is able to get this into feudal and even castle age with this much econ boost, he will be feeling like he's in a very, very good spot. As long as he can, can hold map control and keep these docks alive, he should be in an okay spot. Here is the first Desert Raider entering the map. We can see that Recon was able to scout that quite quickly. Uh, not, a, not an expensive unit, uh, pretty pretty mundane. It's not as cheap, obviously, as an archer of 50 extra food, but not in a crazy investment, kind of like an early night might be. Actually, I mean, it's 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 similar-ish, but not really. Oh, the, I sorry, I didn't realize the 50 gold. That is so on me. It is the same investment, so take that away. Um, I just didn't see the gold for some reason. Actually, for a second there, I was like, this is such a good deal without the gold, but the the gold makes it much more understandable. An early tower coming out because Recon knows he needs to get this gold um, and protect this gold as as much as possible. One, uh, to stop this harassment of the Cesar Raider, and two, he is still not aged up, so he knows he needs plenty of gold. You can see, though, that the just-in-case recon had it in the bag. He did have the 200 gold needed even before this Desert Raider got there, and that is because he scouted it with that um, con early on. That's why it's always important to get those scouts um, moving and grooving as fast as possible. The more information that you have, the better off you're going to be in. I know that sounds pretty... pretty honestly on brand but it really is the case we can see that Avely is slowly starting to creep up in terms of gold 
adding one more Desert Raider into the mix. I'm going to aggress early on to this dock. So instead of actually shooting these um, fishing boats, which it looks like he could almost guarantee at least one kill, because as you know, as you can see, only three fishing boats can be docked at once. So actually could probably idle time some of these instead of going after the dock itself, but maybe assume that since Recon so so heavily invested in this early fishing eco for here and over here, realizing um, full well that Recon's not going to have any sort of army anytime soon, so might be actually able to take this down with this additional Desert Raider over here. I still would be interested to see if you if you turn on these bows and attack these over here, but we'll have to wait and see. So I guess if you don't want to stop one, you can stop them all. We do see Wheelbarrow coming in for Recon, looking to get those villagers. Just moving that much faster, just a little bit, a little bit extra, and it helps every single villager doing every single job. The Deer Stones is the selected landmark, such a cool landmark. And there it goes down an archery range, that's so going to be a quick transition into some archers for the Mongol player. There we go, finally switching onto the boats. You can see that they're so close to shore that they can throw those torches on over. The boats hightail it over the other side of the pond. This is probably why Ava didn't switch to it. Um, just because they can go back, back and forth, back and forth. Taking out this dock is a surefire way to make this stop. There's an early horseman as well, and another desert raider. So it looks like Ava is not going to be rushing Castledge just yet. Um, he sees that he can have the early game advantage um, against the Mongol player because they invested so much into these docks. So decides to go for a little early aggressive aggression on his own. Now a dock is producing an archer ship. This pops out. It could cause a little bit of damage, but this is um, probably enough to actually take it down. Actually, I'm not sure if it actually would, would be beneficial. Another horseman has arrived, so Avery is kind of investing into this horse army. Horse slash camel army going on. Some nice shots there from the archer ship. And now they're gonna be they're gonna be moving out quite quickly, but some some nice focused shots and those um, horsemen are now half health. They are they have found this other deer, but an archer ship is out even faster on this one, so they probably won't be able to actually knock this one down. You can see how much damage these are doing to these um, to these horsemen. It's really doing quite some damage. So that means they won't be able to easily die the TC or that um, that tower either and they do a lot of damage to these desert raiders so they are starting to pick them off as they go over here and a desert raider is actually picking a fight they've actually switched the the archery um the archer range over here and actually i think um recon could actually pull i was going to say pull one of these um, fishing ships and start to heal and that's exactly what they're doing getting so so much value nothing has gone down just yet but a nice there switch up from Avery to take down the fishing ship itself but a trade that you'll probably take almost always if you are a if you are recon just because of how much damage that that boat actually ended up doing yes it did take down one villager but not nearly enough we can still see that Avery still has is, does, has lost the kind of advantage because of those boats on the map and now we also have a significant amount of archers with a con in support here come the Keshiks. Um they used to be the new cool thing in age of empires not any longer, of course, we have so many new civs and so many new strategies, but they're a good front line into what they're going into, and they also have that on-hit healing, so they can just track these guys down the entire way. Another Ketchik is on the way, and he's trying to, trying to get some chip damage, because remember, they can heal up, and these ones cannot. This is a long roundabout way. We're going on an absolute journey here, just kind of zoom in. You know, just kind of, it's pretty chill, honestly. At this point, though, you might want to turn around and just fight. As, there we go. Oh, I, I swear, I didn't watch this replay beforehand. Um, they turn around and just fight. Actually, I was incorrect, um, and Avely was probably correct in the first place. You do not actually do not want that fight, especially with two more Keshiks now on the way. With, with this army over here, Recon is able to really get a sizable military and army advantage because of that fishing eco. So it has turned out and paid for itself, but as you can see up top, Avely is about to turn Castle Age, and Recon's not even close to that, um, to that expiring, and that's also why Recon has such a heavy military advantage. Um, let's see which wing will they decide to go. We are going for the Bazaar, a little bit of gambling coming in on the later side of things. Let's see what he decides to get out of that, and what he decides to gamble his winnings on. But a nice trade over here for these Kashyyyks, they're, they're cleaning up a lot of expensive camels. Even though the debuff is strong with that one, remember if you are facing camels as horsemen, they do get a nice little debuff there. 
um, for all horsemen, and it makes them a little bit uneasy. They saw a camel, they're not used to it. So 15% or 20% less damage, which is always a nice little pickup over there. Let me just see, make sure I read that. Cause enemy horses to carry two. Yeah, so yeah, 20% less damage. I did read that correctly. Read what, what is going on here? Hello. So this is super interesting. Recon decided to stop chasing the uh, the bandit pack in the backhand side of his base, the raider pack, if you will, and decides to drop a forward deer stone. This isn't the curl tie. This is deer stones. This is usually a curl tie selection. We also, no one's got this yet. No one sees that this thing is this forward. It shouldn't be here at all. But I can see why he did it. Um, they get the YAM network. Increasing the YAM mark technology, increased movement speed by 15% to all units within range of this outpost and landmark. So you're going to be sitting here. You could drop a tower, but instead, why don't you just drop a deer stone? Because you, you can get a little bit extra juice from cavalry. So these catchers are going to be moving at Mach 10 miles an hour. There's the YAM. As you can see, they're all feeling it. Everyone's yamming it up right now. And they're getting a little bit extra boost, too. You know, just like they're just cruising um, as we go. And here comes the ramp. We're coming into play. We're getting a little bit of harassment done over here from these horsemen. They did pick off, it looks like, an archer, not a villager. So it's still one to one. This is a pretty scary looking army coming into over here. We do have the skirmishers, which it looks like that was the gamble um, being done. These skirmishers over here is always a nice pickup on that front. And we have a few villagers actually going down. Three in total now. Four. Ooh, so close to five. If five went down, that would be really, really nice. And this first um, tower goes down. Unfortunately, Recon did not um, micro quick enough to actually get another villager. Um, five in total, but this now um, tower is going to be going down as well. Keshex did pay the price for that, and now we have Camel Lancers on the map, which will be able to deal with this army pretty easily, especially with these gambled skirmishers on the backhand side. It's just, it reminds me a lot of the, the Russian... Uh, the Rus um, Kremlin just spawn an army, no words at all, bang. We just instantly have a little bit of defense, because without those, that would have been a very, very rough fight. Now you can see Avely sees now the deer stones uh, over here, which is why they're so quick. He's probably laughing to himself at how, how far up that deer stones actually is. And these lancers are actually pretty low, so it actually does pick off a pretty expensive lancer. Uh, and we'll be moving back, 19 archers are on the map and a still robust um, fishing economy, actually adding in a third pond. So Recon running a monopoly on ponds, and you can see the difference in the food over here. Look at the food income. It's similar, but as you can see, 24 to 22. But those, there's a lot of fishing boats on those. So he also has 19 on wood and 11 on gold, and that's the major difference right now, 56 to 39. Can't really keep up with that economy, no matter what you do. So. I do see what Abley was going for here, but giving up that early fishing economy and not being able to cash in on that early aggression with that uh, Camel Raider force that he had really, really was in, was really impactful in this game. These Lancers are incredibly powerful, so they will be able to do some damage. But this might be the, this might be how you take down the mighty Ayubids. Uh You really get those Mongol Mongol economy up and running those Keshiks into these. Um, Camel's not usually the best, but then you have a surplus, an absolute surplus of arcs to the backhand side. Interesting, where, where are you lot going? You're moving on over here. We're going to be dropping a mill. So a mill will be, they won't be actually scattered over here because nothing's in um, this pond over yonder. But these archers have found these lancers. Might be pulling back eventually. We do have a dervish on the map. Trying to get some map control in terms of these relics. And we'll be actually able to collect that one in the middle. Sneak away from that archer ship. Some nice micro there from Avery the Step. Um, Rebound is going down on this gold over here. And also getting up another tower to protect himself from those pesky camel lancers. And they've finally gone down the backhand side of the base. Recon is now cast late with a robust economy. Um, Avery's actually... Is he going to be going for a quick Imperial? That might be the case. Is that what he's trying to do? That would be crazy. He looks like it looks like that's what the case is. Look at how many people he has on gold. 16 in total. We're actually another gold vein um, up and running. And there is a ton on food. 
So the play is a, is a fast Imperial with the help of Skirmishers to defend at all costs over here. We do see the Dervish is trying to collect more and more of these relics. We'll be able to sneak in here and get this one. Actually, it's going to collect the far one over yonder, but um, Recon has smartly built up an outpost and these Lancers won't be able to do much um, damage at all. They did pick off two more villagers though, so a nice scoop up there from Avely is not out of this just yet even with this insane economy the ibids player is really feeling like there is a chance especially if they're able to go for that quick imperial age that would be insane i'm not sure if they're gonna be able to get there though because recon can um turn this 44 military and if he starts to get these castle age archers and stops chasing all these units he can do some serious damage the deer stones the four deer stones will be going down eventually though because there's more and more of these camel archers coming in and just kidding, wipe it all away. Avery's going to be investing all of that into um, some military, which I respect, honestly. That's the, that's probably the correct play, if we're being 100% honest. These Keshiks are castlers, that's why they're doing so well now into these Camel Lancers. Of course, Camel Lancers do have that debuff, but when you have that, when you're outnumbered this much, it's going to be always a problem. Another village gets picked off, so Avery is doing very, very well with these raids. We can see, though, a Keshik is kind of responding in tow and they have found a large amount of villagers and there's one Keshik is going to get that Call of Duty KDA up through the roof. This one Spearman's here, it's like a kind of a supporting cache, you know what I mean? They just poke away, another one goes down, another one bites the dust, we're up to nine. More Keshiks found this satellite food camp going on over here for Avely, that's why it's so important to scout. We have some crossbowmen added in, just taking pot shots left and right. I'm um, probably going to, I was going to say, probably going to just clamp down on these remaining ones over here and they actually take a little bit of a, a jab step downward which is the worst case scenario 18 villagers killed that might be all she wrote that's brutal and that's exactly what i'm talking about a major major issue um that the that lower level players do not do and i'm 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 a victim of this as well you gotta scout the best you possibly can i will say though in this matchup don't know if that's the full um, nail in the coffin. I think the nail in the coffin was just letting those early um, food decos go up, but this is still a, a nice fight here. Some full-on engage, but a nice spearman in into the backhand side, and there's plenty of crossbowmen to take down these heavy camel lancers. The skirmishers in the backhand side trying to trade out, but there's so many archers over here. And they're able to thwart this military. The Dervish is trying to heal up the best they possibly can. This Keshik front line is still alive, and now they're making their way onto these crossbowmen and skirmishers and archers alike and that is gg that is a clinic on how you play hidden valley and how you beat the ie bids with the mongols well played by both players if you guys did enjoy this video please do leave a like please subscribe and have a wonderful night